In our last lesson, we talked about converting from polar to rectangular. Today we're going to talk about going from rectangular to polar, as well as some other trig function concepts. So let's start with this. We know that we have the sine of some angle equaling 0.6, and we want to find all values of theta such that the sine is equal to 0.6 between 0 and 360 degrees. Well, let's just take a look real quick at a circle. This is where all our trig functions come from. Whose sine value is roughly 0.6. Well, we know that this is a positive value and positive values for sine are the y values which occur in both the first and second quadrants. So really what we need to do is we need to use our calculator to find the inverse sine of 0.6 to get our angle first of all. So we take theta equals the inverse sine of 0.6 and we get a value of 38 point or 36.8 Degrees, which means that in this quadrant at a theta value of 36.8 degrees we get a sine value of 0.6 but we also know that these circles are symmetric about the two axes both the x's and the y's and if I flip this over there's another y value of 0.6 over here and it has a reference relative to this horizontal that is also 36 degrees away so if I were to move back 36 degrees I'm gonna get the same y value well 36 degrees from 180 is going to be 143.2 now your calculator will never give you this because all your calculator will do is give you function values and which means for every x there's exactly one y it won't give you multiple values so we always have to come up with this one on our own so here's a few of the same we have a cosine value now of 0.3 which means again here's a circle and if my cosine value once again is positive that's talking about my x value so we have a positive x value in the first quadrant and a positive x value in the fourth quadrant and then I go to my calculator once again and take the inverse cosine of 0.3 to get my theta value and we end up in this case with theta equaling 72.5 degrees which means once again in our first quadrant the theta measurement of 72.5 we get a cosine value of 0.3 now once again to get to the fourth quadrant I flip this over because again I'm symmetric about that x-axis and I have another reference angle here of 72.5 degrees and if I move in a clockwise fashion that's like negative actually they want it between 0 and 360 degrees so I have to subtract from 360 72.5 and when I do that I get 287.5 degrees again your calculator is not going to give you that second one because it only gives you for each x there's exactly one y value. It's going to give you a first quadrant or possibly a second quadrant for that. Lastly, let's go ahead and do this guy. We've got a sine value of negative two-sevenths and where will that exist? Well again we're going to take this circle, find a y value of negative two-sevenths which would be a negative y somewhere down in the fourth quadrant and also somewhere down 
in the third quadrant and we take our inverse sine of negative two sevenths to get theta and theta in this case happens to be a negative angle of negative sixteen point six but if I want some positive angle between zero and three sixty I take my three sixty subtract sixteen point six and I get an angle in this quadrant of three forty three point four degrees now I know that if this is my theta value here then in the fourth quadrant by flipping over I get that equal theta value over here which has the same y value and that 16.6 .6 degrees away from 180 so I add that and I get 196.6 .6 degrees and that's my second guy And finally, let's do one with the tangent. We know our tangent is 1.27. So in a circle where I have a positive tangent value, this is a little bit different in that tangent is y over x. So I need a y over x being a positive, so I need to have the same sign. Because if I have different signs, then I have a negative. So a y over x that's positive would be in this quadrant and in the third quadrant because I have two negatives and if I go a negative over a negative I get a positive and then we go back to once again taking and finding our angle value by taking the inverse tangent of 1.27 which gives us 51.27 call it 8 degrees. So I know here's my angle theta of 51.8. Now the difference in this problem is that I can't just flip over one axis to get to that y over x value because flipping over one axis puts me with a negative tangent measure. So I have to actually flip over two axes like so and come up with my reference in the third quadrant and that reference once again is 51.8 degrees from 180 so if I take and add those I get a total of 231 point 8 degrees so there's one and two values. Now as stated at the beginning of the problem we're going to convert some values from rectangular to polar degrees. We know that in this case if I have from the origin some x and y value I know that's equivalent to some r and theta value up at this point. And I know that this forms a Pythagorean relationship where x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And I also know that if I want this angle theta, since I have this right triangle, I can use the trig relationship of tangent equals y over x. So if I just want r, all I have to do is take the square root of x squared plus y squared and to get theta by itself we just take an inverse tangent which we've been doing a lot this morning so in essence to get from rectangular using x's and y's to polar I take the square root of x squared plus y squared to give me my r value and the inverse tangent to give me my theta value let's go through and do a couple of those so we want to convert this. We take 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted because that's my x squared plus y squared. 
and then we take the inverse tangent of y over x to get my angle. So this ends up equaling 5 for my radius and 53.1 degrees for my angle. And that's my polar. Ah. Do the same thing here for 2 and negative 3. 2 squared plus negative 3 squared square rooted followed by the inverse tangent of negative 3 over 2. And that's going to give us 9 and 4, which is 13. Square root that, so it's the square root of 13. I'll just leave it in exact form. Take the inverse tangent here. I get negative 56.3 degrees. And that makes sense because 2 and negative 3 put me in the fourth quadrant. And that looks like a negative angle measure of about 56. Let's go ahead and do one more. I need to convert negative 5, 1 to polar coordinates. So once again, I take square root of negative 5 squared plus 1 squared and the inverse tangent of negative 1 over 5. That will give me my polar which is square root of 26 and negative 11.3 degrees. Now, in this case I've got a little bit of a problem because when I look at negative 5 and 1, negative 5, 1 puts me somewhere in the second quadrant. And root 26 and negative 11 degrees puts me somewhere down in the fourth quadrant. So if I know my value has to be up here, there must be some symmetry reflections going on. So I would have to take and flip over the x-axis and then flip over the y-axis, kind of like we did in one of our previous problems today, to get to this new reference angle, which is 11.3 degrees. So if I move now in the second quadrant, 11.3 degrees up, basically I'm subtracting from 180, 11.3 degrees, and that gives me roughly 168.7 degrees. So, our actual answer is root 26 and 168.7 degrees. And once again we got this 168.7 by taking 180 and subtracting 11.3 from it. That's all we have for today. Again, no connect ed problems. Just fill out the summary and we'll talk more tomorrow.